Back in February, the Italian newspaper Corriere della Sera dropped a bombshell investigation. They claimed that the new Chinese owner of Italian giants AC Milan, Li Yonghong, maybe wasn't the moneybags millionaire he'd claimed to be when his Rossoneri sports group bought the club from the erstwhile former owner Silvio Berlusconi in April 2017. When the move was first mooted in 2016, it seemed that AC Milan was the latest pawn in China's multiple billion pound gambit to revolutionise the international football business. Over £200 million was spent on transfers, even though there had been question marks raised over who Li was and where he got his money. Instead, Corriere della Sera alleged that Li was in fact bankrupt and that his assets were being auctioned off on China's version of eBay. Li, of course, strongly denied the rumours of his financial demise in a statement, saying that some media have irresponsibly reported fake news that has damaged the club, my companies, my family and myself. From the day I bought AC Milan, I have faced difficulties and have been under unprecedented pressure. But this wasn't the first time doubts about Lee had been raised. A self-declared billionaire who claimed he had grown rich in mining before emerging to buy one of the world's most famous clubs from one of football and indeed Italian politics most infamous men. Silvio Berlusconi bought AC Milan when it was down on its knees. The Rossoneri had been relegated to Serie B twice in the early 1980s and was on the verge of bankruptcy. Berlusconi was a flamboyant Italian billionaire media tycoon. Through a tangled web of companies, he secured control of AC Milan in 1986. The club was one of a host of entities owned by its holding company, Finivest, which included Mediaset, Italy's biggest private media company. The move had been especially lucrative for Milan and Berlusconi. Arrigo Sacchi was appointed coach and his team, which featured Ruud Hullet, Marco van Basten, Paolo Mandini and Franco Baresi, became one of the first global super clubs in the modern era. Although Sacchi left in 1991, he was replaced by Fabio Capello. Milan dominated Italian football in the decade after Berlusconi's arrival, winning five Scudettos, two European Cups and the newly rebranded Champions League in its second year. Berlusconi, meanwhile, became Italy's Prime Minister a controversial figure mired in corruption allegations. He was cleared of paying an underage prostitute for sex in one trial, which popularised the phrase bunga bunga sex parties. He was eventually found guilty of tax fraud and barred from public office, although that didn't stop him trying to make a failed political comeback during this year's Italian general election, even though he was banned from taking up any role until 2019, nor the fact that he is 81 years old. Still, in 2016, Berlusconi was looking to offload Milan, which was losing money and performing poorly on the pitch. After a few abortive attempts at selling the club, Berlusconi finally found someone with pockets he believed were deep enough to buy AC Milan. The buyer was from China. We've spoken at length before about the Chinese football revolution, how China's president Xi Jinping is a massive football fan and how he prompted a flood of investments into European football, some good, some bad. So, when a Chinese company, Sino Europe Sports Investment Management Changshin Co. Limited, came looking to buy AC Milan for over 700 million euros, it seemed that the club was the latest and perhaps biggest acquisition of Xi's footballing revolution. At the centre of the takeover was Li Yonghong, a Hong Kong based businessman who few had heard anything about before. The holding company looking to buy AC Milan sat atop a complex web of companies and state backed investors. A large nine-figure deposit was paid and negotiations commenced. But a year later, those negotiations were still dragging on as certain red flags were raised as to whether the Chinese company actually had the money. State-backed investors pulled out as the Chinese government cracked down on capital flight, money leaving China for foreign investments. And that was not all. When Reuters tried to find the offices of eight companies connected to the shell company in the bid, they found that none existed. The New York Times later discovered that Li Yonghong's mining empire wasn't quite as lucrative as he had claimed, nor was it actually owned by him, at least on paper. There was also the issue of alleged forged bank documents that held up the sale, but eventually it went through, in March 2017, to what was now Rossoneri Sports Group Investment Luxembourg. It was the biggest capture of a football club by a Chinese business, and Li Yonghong would be the chairman of the club. Milan went on a spending spree, buying Leonardo Bonucci, Nikola Kalinic, Andre Silva and Hakanjel Hanoyu. Thanks to the investment climate changing in China and Chinese investors backing out of the AC Milan deal, Li secured a $354 million loan from Elliott Management, a controversial US hedge fund that has also been dubbed a vulture fund. 
Vulture funds buy up bad government debts at low rates, usually when a country is in deep crisis, and later fiercely litigate to extract repayment, usually at the expense, activists say, of other government expenditure like healthcare and education. The loan, with an interest rate that can top 11%, is to be paid back in October 2018. Results, alas, did not go to plan. After losing to Roma, Juve, Inter and Napoli, coach Vincento Montella was sacked and replaced by Milan legend Gennaro Gattuso. Meanwhile, around the time of Montella's sacking, UEFA announced that it had taken a keen interest in Milan's finances and whether or not the club can comply with its financial fair play rules. In December 2017, the investigatory chamber of UEFA's club financial control body turned down AC Milan's request for a voluntary agreement to be in accordance with FFP rules. In a statement, UEFA said that there are still uncertainties in relation to the refinancing of the loans to be paid back in October 2018 and the financial guarantees provided by the main shareholder. And then, a few months later, came the allegations, since denied, that Lee, or at least some of his businesses, were bankrupt. Still, it's not all doom and gloom, for now at least. Things are looking better on the pitch, even though Arsenal knocked Milan out of the Europa League. After a rocky start, Gattuso's Milan has won eight of its nine Serie A games in 2018, but they are five points off a Champions League qualification spot. With so much uncertainty about Milan's finances, its owner, the club's ability to meet UEFA's financial fair play rules, and the huge loan it has to repay in October, Gattuso has been thrust into the middle of a financial saga one where missing out on the Champions League could be devastating.